I'll be putting this camera through your nostril to look at your nose, throat and all the way down to your voice box. Okay, I can see all the way to your voice box. Can you say E? E. Very good. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi everyone, and I'm Daniel. And I'm... Oh, sorry, sorry. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel. I sleep poorly and feel sluggish and sleepy throughout the day and have problems focusing or paying attention. It's frustrating. Well, I'm here at the Sing Health Duke NUS Sleep Centre and I'm going to see if I can get some help to improve my situation. Let's go! So why the fascination with sleep? Let's find out. Hi Dr. Sean. Hi Daniel. So why the focus on sleep? When it comes to sleep in Singapore, we have both a problem with quantity and quality. In a recent international study that polled 43 countries, Singapore is the third most sleep deprived country in the world. And when it comes to quality, obstructive sleep apnea is a real problem. A recent local study showed that 30% of Singaporeans have at least moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. And what's really worrying is that it showed that 90% of these patients were undiagnosed and untreated. Wow, why are Singaporeans sleeping so little? I believe it's because of how our society is. In Singapore, we actually wake up at the same time as people in other countries, but because of various demands from work, from family, from our desire to have leisure time, we end up pushing our bedtimes further and further back and this results in reduced sleep quantity and sleep deprivation. What about OSA? Can you tell me more? OSA or obstructive sleep apnea occurs when there are repeated episodes of upper airway collapse when the patient sleeps. This collapse of the upper airway results in disruption in the patient's breathing at night and all these breathing disruptions result in poor quality sleep. So for these patients, even though they may have sufficient quantity of sleep, because the quality of their sleep is compromised, they end up waking tired the next day. So Daniel, what about you? What's keeping you up awake at night? Ah, to be frank, doctor, I really don't know. All I know is this is a nightmare. It's okay, Daniel. Let us try to find out together. Have a seat on the chair and we can do your nasal endoscopy. So this is a flexible camera. I'll be putting this camera through your nostril to look at your nose, throat and all the way down to your voice box. If you're uncomfortable anytime during this procedure, please let me know. Okay, I can see all the way to your voice box. Can you say E? E. Very good, you're doing well. Okay, breathe normally. Alright, so I've got the necessary information I need already. And we're done. So Daniel, we've done your nasal endoscopy and here are the results. Well, I've identified several problem areas. Starting from the nose, what I saw was that the septum or the middle of your nose is bent to the left. The tissues in your nose or the turbinates are also swollen, as is often the case in patients with nose allergies. Together, this would cause a blocked nose as well as mouth breathing at night. Lower down in your throat, I noticed that your tonsils at the back of your throat are enlarged and also those at the back of your tongue. Put together, the problems in your nose, throat and tongue area can result in obstructive sleep apnea. Based on what I've seen, I would recommend that you come in to do a sleep study. What is this sleep study you're talking about? Well, a sleep study is essentially a night of observed sleep here in the sleep lab. Our sleep technicians will hook up various equipment to you to monitor your brain waves, to study your breathing, to look at your heart rate and blood oxygenation levels. With all this information, we'll be able to study the quality of your sleep and to see whether or not you have obstructive sleep apnea or not. Right now, my sleep pattern is not, it's very erratic 
and uh, like I sleep for about four hours. So about four to five hours. I'm quite consistent in my sleep. I average about six to seven hours. When I'm very stressed at work, so gradually that will be like taking less than six hours of sleep per day. So the quality of sleep will drops because I'll wake up in the middle of the night. So I'm a light sleeper, so I tend to get woken up by light, by noise, by all these different things. And if I'm stressed and I'm thinking about something that's going to happen in the next day, that's where I also tend to wake up a little bit more. So I would rate my sleep around uh, 4, like very low because I'm, not, I'm never satisfied with the amount of sleep that I get. I think I do really have a quality of sleep because I'm a deep sleeper. So I do really like knock out before I sleep all the way through with my alarm screens. As you all can see, now I'm here for the overnight sleep study at the sleep lab. Once I'm ready, I will go to bed and the sleep technicians will start monitoring and analysing my sleeping patterns throughout the night. So here goes! Now that I'm ready, it's time to go to bed. Good night and see y'all! Hi Dr. Sean. Hi Daniel. These are the results of your sleep study. So there are many parameters over here, but what I can see is that the quality of your sleep is poor because you have reduced the amount of deep sleep at night. And this is because of the many sleep-related breathing disruptions that you have. Based on this night study, I saw that your breathing gets disrupted 22.5 times per hour. This is consistent with moderate obstructive sleep apnea. Wow, I didn't know I stopped breathing so many times every night. No wonder I don't get good sleep. Is this curable? What can be done? There are several things we can do to try to address your sleep apnea. The gold standard of treatment at the moment is the use of CPAP therapy. A CPAP machine pumps pressurized air into your upper airway at night to stabilize your airway and to prevent blockage from happening. CPAP therapy is very effective, but the problem is that not everyone can get used to sleeping with a machine at night. For patients that cannot get used to CPAP, the use of an oral appliance is an alternative. The oral appliance moves your jaw forward at night to expand your airway. But prior to using this, we should consult a dentist first. For patients that cannot get used to a CPAP machine or an oral appliance, surgery is an option. The aim of surgery is to reconstruct and to stabilize the upper airway such that it doesn't block up at night. The latest surgical development is the use of an implant to treat sleep apnea. This implant sends electrical impulses to the tongue at night to cause protrusion of the tongue, such that the upper airway doesn't block up. But before we get to all these options, there are simple things that you can do to try to improve your sleep. For one, you can try to sleep at a fixed time every night, and try to ensure that you get 7 hours of sleep every night. Is it alright if I use my phone near bedtime, or have the blue light or night filter on? So it's a misconception that the use of a blue light filter makes it okay to use your phone late into the night. In fact, the blue light filter simply relieves eye strain. The excess light emitted from the phone actually tricks the brain into thinking that daytime is extended. And because of this, the production of melatonin is affected. Decreased melatonin production results in disrupted sleep. Some people try to sleep more or take naps on weekends or on off days. Does this balance things out? So a common tactic is to try to use weekend sleep to repay sleep debt. This may work in the short term, but studies have shown that in the long term, this pattern of sleeping does not reverse the damage caused by sleep deprivation incurred on the weekdays. For starters, we can work on some of the sleep hygiene tips that we discussed, like sleeping at a fixed time, getting 7 hours of sleep a night, and not using your mobile device late into the night. I will be starting you on a trial of CPAP therapy, and I can see you again in 1-2 to two months time. At that point in time, if you find that CPAP is not something for you, we can always discuss alternatives then. Thank you, Dr. Sean, for guiding me through this process. Thank you, Daniel. Now, I finally know what has been causing me all these sleepless nights all these years. I am relieved that treatment is available, and I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Hopefully, this will be the start to my journey to a more blissful sleep. If you too are having trouble with your sleep and would like to know more, do search online with the keywords Sleep Center Sing Health. And with that, good night and sleep well.